Zotero is probably my favorite reference manager. If you want it, you can go down to Zotero.org. There you see a quick download and it's as easy as clicking that button, executing the file and you get Zotero. So here we go. At the top, we've got all of what you'd normally expect, file, uh, edit, view, tools. We'll go through some of those in a moment, but ultimately here are the two main thing, I guess three main panels actually. We've got this, we've got my library, and then you've got all of these folders and files that you can sort of like navigate between. In the middle, you've got all of the files that are in each folder. And then on the end here is where all of the details pop up once you click one of these files. So I'll click this one and you can see you get all of this information here. You get the authors, you get the abstract, you get a load of information and that's all of the important information you need because later on we'll be using this information to reference different papers in our writing, in our academic writing. One thing I like to do first is organize my library. So here we got my library which is fine and then underneath you can see you've got Andy Research and we've got Transparent Electrodes. That was one type of research that I did, but I also did OPV. So let's have a look to see what I can do. I can click here and then I have get enter a name for this collection. This collection is essentially a folder and so I want to say OPV, which is Organic Photovoltaic Devices, and I'll say OK. Now you see it puts us in my library, but it's very simple. We can just drag this into Andy Research like this. Oh, I missed it again. There we go. We got it in there eventually and we can see this is OPV and transparent electrodes and then I've got Andy Research. So I can start kind of just sort of like organizing where this goes. Um, I can say that I want it in you know particular folders. It's as easy as being able to kind of just sort out where you want it all to go. Once we got our files in here we can change which folders or collections they go into by right clicking and say add to collection. Then we've got Andy Research and we've got them all down here. By right clicking on this we can see you've got a load of options that you would want to sort of like use as a researcher. Open PDF, open PDF in new window and all of these sort of things. We can add notes, we can export item, we can create bibliography and we can generate reports. We've got so many options. Click through to see what makes sense for you. Um, but ultimately that's how we navigate this kind of folder system. Then in the middle panel we've got all of this stuff. These are all of the different types of books, of literature, of uh, peer-reviewed papers that we have found. There's a number of ways we can actually get stuff in here. First of all, we can just add it. So we can go here and we can say add. We click here and we can add a book, book section, document, and a journal article, newspaper, and much, much more. Look at all of these. It pretty much covers every sort of academic input that you would want to cite ever. So. I want to have a look at a new journal article and you can see here it opens up a new one and this is where we can start manually adding things. I don't like doing it this way. I'm going to delete this. Yes, I want to make sure that I delete it. And let's have a look at how we can actually put stuff in there very, very simply. Now, I'm using um, the extension for Zotero and you can get that on any app store. I'm using it in uh, Vivaldi, but any sort of like Chromium, Firefox, you can find this extension. I'm in Google Scholar and I've looked at organic photovoltaic devices. Now, there's a couple of things we can do. If we just like all of these, we can click up here into the extension and we can say, yeah, I want to to add this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and then I just click OK and they'll save it into Andy Research. But you can see that you can add it into other places as well. But here is what's happening, saving to Andy Research. Look, all of this and it tells you if there's a PDF available via Google Scholar and if we head back to Zotero you can see that they're slowly being put in here. Here it is here, here's another one down here. So this is where they all end up. Having this sort of like linked is just so valuable because it saves so much time manually importing and typing out uh, loads of, uh, you know, really boring details into Zotero. So there's one way you can do it. And then if you click into one of these things like here, you can see that then you can add a PDF. This little icon changes to a PDF document. It says add to or save to Zotero. So I'm going to click that and I'm going to say I want to save it to and then we can go down. I want to save it to OPVs and then I am done. And if we go back to Zotero, 
we can see now it's in there. It is instant, it is rapid, it is so easy to put stuff in there and I absolutely love it. Stay around because I'll be showing you my favorite integrations and one of them really makes this just so much fun. Because Zotero is open access, there are a load of companies integrating their stuff into Zotero. So my favorite one here is Research Rabbit. If I go into Research Rabbit, you can see up here, we've got Import Zotero Collection. And once you're sort of like all uh, synced up, you can say, okay, yeah, I want this one actually, Start Sync. And then you enter a new name for your collection. It's just so, so easy, but it goes so much further because check this one out. I think this one is so, so very cool. And uh, this integration is called Aria. Aria is available on GitHub at the the moment and it's your AI research assistant and it's about putting chat GPT smack bang in the middle boop, 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 middle of your research. So this is one thing I absolutely love. You need to go through a few steps to get it um, actually integrated, but it's so simple to do. All you have to do is go down to the installation here and a detailed walkthrough is available, but it's really, really simple. You go to this area, you download the .xpi file, then you go to tools at the top of Zotero, I'll show you where that is, and then you say add-ons, and you literally say up here, go to file, uh, install add-on from file, and then you click on the ARIA and then it's easy, easy, and this is where it is. And this is what you get. You get this little dude at the top with amazing sunglasses and uh, hair that I'm very jealous of. So all we do is click ARIA and this is making sure that you can chat then with all of the references you've got in Zotero, which means it's not gonna make up references like ChatGPT can do. It's not gonna hallucinate because you're giving it the information directly from the references that you have found. Mwah, love it. So I've done a few things up here, but this is how it starts is you've got a prompt library and you can search your library. You can ask a collection. You can summarize papers. You can analyze a researcher, all of these different things. Now, one thing you've got to do that I didn't do initially was you have to go to OpenAI and put in your own OpenAI API key. It's very, very simple. I'll put a link in the description of where you get that. It's a paid service, but it's so little money for the power that you are opening up in Zotero that it's completely worth it in my opinion. So here we are, um, you can see here, it's got compare. So I said, compare this paper and this paper in two to three sentences. And you can see it took like, you know, maybe just five seconds to do this. It was so quick is that it just comes up with this little kind of like generating reply. So if I want to know something, who is the best author of these papers with the best beard. I'm sorry, but I can't determine the quality of a, an author's beard. Please, you, please, blah, blah. I'm so annoyed. It's me. I'll be speaking to the developers, mate. And so that's how you get ChatGPT straight in the middle of Zotero. Mm, I love it. Go check it out. Add this because I think it's going to be so, so important for you going forward. Now let's talk about using Zotero in a range of different text editors. There's all of the popular ones covered. Here is a Word document and you can see that I have got a little bit of an uh, abstract and sort of like thing going on. I just did this in ChatGPT. Um, but ultimately, if I'm going through and I'm like, oh, I want to add a reference. It's so very easy. Once you've uh, installed Zotero onto your desktop. But all you need to do is work out where you want to put the reference. So here is how you do it. You click up here to Zotero. Then you get all of this. And then you, I want to like add a citation. So I click there and to add citation, this little thing pops up and I'm talking about degradation. So I'm gonna start putting degradation. There is the reference that I wanna put in. I click it, I push enter, and there's a little one here. But wait, there's a problem. It actually hasn't put a reference or bibliography at the end here. It's very easy you go up here and you click add or edit bibliography. There we are, I don't know why I found that so hard. And there it is, there is the issue. Now let's say I wanna put another reference here. I can go to add or edit citation. I click here, I'm just gonna put one of my, oh, Andy doesn't exist, Andrew, here we are. I'm gonna put this one, why not? And you can see that it puts it as number two and down here we've got the number two reference. And it's so easy to sort of like add stuff and add references to your work in this way, even as you're typing away. So you need to go to document preferences because I have got I E E E E E E E E E uh, selected, but you can add a range of different styles. If I go to manage styles and then get additional styles, I can add so many. I added, for example, ACS Nano 
know. Uh, and so if you've got a specific journal that you're writing for, it is almost certain that they have the style that you need already in Zotero, so you don't need to mess around with all of that weird formatting. Don't like that, this makes it so very easy. Now let's say I've been editing and I want this one actually in front of the other one. No dramas. Now copy and paste, oh well. Look, it says number two, but it's reference first. What do I do? Very easy, go to refresh. One, two, one, and it's already done it for me. And all I need to do down here is put, you know, references. And there's my reference section. So very, very easy to do in Word. Although, don't do this until the very end and you're certain you're not gonna make any more edits, is unlink citations. This removes the connection between this and your library, and it means then you can send it off somewhere without it sort of like really screwing up. So do not push that until the very end, otherwise you're in a world of pain, you have to go reference it all again. But you can also use it in Google. So here we have, I've got Google uh, Docs open. This is a similar sort of thing. Let's say I wanna go into, uh, put in this reference. So once you've installed the Zotero plugin, which is up here, um, you then go to Zotero, add or edit citation. The same thing pops up. Zotero is updating your document. You can see you get the same bar that pops up. I want uh, degradation. I'm putting it there, I click enter, boom. Once again, we don't get the reference section, we need to put that in manually, so we go Zotero, add or edit bibliography, and you can see it already pops up, that is how you reference, and you can go, you can edit, you can change, you can update things. If this detail here isn't right for you, just head to Zotero and um, have a look to see what it's referencing. This is where it gets all the information from, so update that information there, and you are golden. Super, super easy. That's how you put it in Word. That's how you put it in Google Docs. If you like this video, go check out this one where I talk about how to use Perplexity AI for research and how amazing it really is. Go check it out.